In this To Get You Started video, we will be showing you how to create this mantle layout using models from the Wildlife Scenes collection from designandmate.com. If you are interested in purchasing the collection, please click on the Wildlife Collection banner to the top left or the link in the description below. We hope that this is a helpful video to get you started. In this demonstration, uh, we are going to be using VCarve Pro version 8 to create our layout. It's important to remember that the tools that we are going to use are also available in Aspire and VCarve Desktop. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out and we're going to create a new file. Now in this case, our finished mantle is going to be 60 inches by 10 inches tall. So we're going to make our job space 61 inches by 11 inches and our thickness, our material thickness is going to be three quarters of an inch. We're going to set our datum to the center. Of course our units are in inches. We're going to make sure that we have a very high resolution selected. That's important because this is such a big layout and that's great. So we're going to click OK. So the first thing we're going to do in order to get all of our layout um, inside of the 60 by 10 inch box is we're going to create a box that's going to be that exact size. So we're going to go ahead and draw a rectangle. Uh, our anchor point is going to be in the center and our X and Y is going to be zero. So the box is going to start in the center of our workspace, our job space, excuse me. And we're going to go ahead and make that 60 inches by 10 inches and we're going to create that. There we have it and we're going to close down. Now we're going to use this to align the rails that we are going to use to make the, um, the, the frame for our mantle. So we're going to flip over to our clip art tab. We're going to go to our design and make folder and we're going to slide all the way down to our wildlife scenes. And we have all the wildlife scenes installed deep in the woods the deer mantle, the duck panel, the elk scenes, and the pheasant hunt. So we're going to go to the duck panel and we're going to grab the border rail. So we're going to double click on that. That means that VCarve Pro is going to bring that right into the center of our job space. And we want to make sure that we align that with the on the inside of this the bottom of our box. So we're going to go to our drawing tab and we're going to go to our alignment tool. And we're going to first we're going to select the border and then we're going to select our box and we're going to use this one right here which is aligned to the inside edge. So we're going to click that, we're going to close that and then we're going to go ahead and just select the border and we're going to press T on the keyboard and we're going to size this. So what we want to do is we want to stretch it out to be 60 inches from left to right but we don't want to change the height any. So we're going to unlink the X and Y and we're going to change our width to be 60 inches and we're going to hit apply and then close. So that fits perfectly inside of our box. We're going to reselect that rail and we're going to hold down our shift and our control and our V key and that will mirror that over our center line um, vertically so the, to the top of our job. So now we have two rails which are perfect. So let's go back to our clip art tab and we're going to bring in the rail again and we're going to build the end of our box now. So we're going to hold down our shift key and grab the rotation handle on this new border and we're going to rotate it around 90, or 90 degrees. We're going to press T on the keyboard again and we're going to size this so again we want to make sure that the X and Y is unlinked and we want to change the height to 10. We're going to click apply, we're going to close that we're going to go back into our Align Selected Objects dialog or tool. We're going to select that rail and we're also going to select the box and then we're going to again align to the inside edge on the left. And there we are. We're going to close that down. Now we're going to select just the rail and we're going to hold down our Control, our Shift key and V and that will flip it over our center point um, vertically. I just didn't have something. Uh... Oh, sorry, not vertically. We've got a whole bunch of copies now. That's a good little example of what just happened. I need to delete some of those out of there. We're going to go Control Z because I deleted one too many. It's actually Control Shift and H because we want to flip it over horizontally. What I was doing is just making a copy and it was just flipping up and down. Anyway, I apologize. So there we are. So if we go to our 3D view now, we've got 
our box build except for the shape heights are wrong because we scaled all these. So because we're only going to use our mantle is only going to be machined in um, a, into half an inch of our material so that leaves us with a quarter inch left over for a backing. We're going to use these borders to sort of define that half inch. So we're going to hold down our shift key and we're going to select both end rails click them one more time and bring up our floating properties dialog which we're going to use quite often and we're going to change our shape height to be 0.5 an inch click the spacebar for VCAR Pro to accept that and then we're going to go ahead and shift select the top and bottom rails and we're going to do the same again with 0.5 press the spacebar and close and because these are all been merged together then um, they will show you just a box which is perfect so if you want to check that you can go to your modeling tab and you'll see that all four of these border rails are set to merge so if I double click on that you'll see that it's actually set to merge and if I go into the actual floating uh, properties dialog they're all set to merge as well so they're merging into each other now this is a little tip for you on making a frame because I want all of the contents inside of my frame to always merge into my frame I'm actually gonna create a single level and I'm gonna call it border and nothing else is gonna be on that level but the border and I'm gonna make that level be a merge level so it's gonna merge into any other uh, levels that I have as long as those levels are below my border level. So we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to right click on the, the level and we're going to rename that and we're going to call that border. And then I'm going to right click there again and I'm going to insert a new level but I'm going to move this border level above that new level I just created and all of what's going to be on this level is going to be my layout. So I right click on that we're going to rename that level layout. So now I still haven't changed my border to be a merge. So just to give you an example of what's going to happen, if I flip over to my clip art tab and I bring in my duck number one and I scale him up and I look at my modeling tab, you'll see that he's on the layout level and he's being, although he's emerged onto this level and he's actually being added, his top wing is being added to the border because the border layer is being added excuse me to my layout level so if I change this sorry layer combine mode to merge then you'll see that now my duck is merging so anything on this layer will now merge into my border so now I, unless I unless I want it to be different which in this case let's say I wanted his top wing to rise above the border to give it some really neat depth then I can go ahead and change this to be point a 6.5 and you'll oh, make it even more than that I guess 0.75 uh, make it 0.85 and we'll give it a oh sorry 0.85 and now you'll see that the top wing is actually riding over top of my border um, and you'll notice that as I'm doing this demonstration it's very organic I'm going to be changing things as I go there's no set numbers with the exception of a few odd numbers and one was the actual width of the border so hopefully you understand how that works this level is now the border the border level is now being merged into my layout level we're going to delete the duck because we don't want him right there right now so let's start out creating our layout for our mantle let's go back to our clip art tab and we're going to use from the deer mantle um, the mountain range number two. So we're going to double click on that and it's going to pop into the center of our job space. And we're going to go ahead and hold down our shift key and grab the scale handle. And we're going to scale it up just so that it's inside of the, the border. So that's, that's good right there. And we're going to use our cursor keys and nudge it down a little bit. I want to leave enough room above it for some clouds in the end. So I think that's fairly good. Now what we're going to make sure is that the the, the shape height of my mountains doesn't take up the majority of the half inch that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. So we're going to double click on it and then click on it again. Bring up our floating dialog box. And we're going to take a look. So right now 
the shape height of this mountain range is over a half inch so some of this is actually proud of my frame which I don't want so we're gonna change this to a quarter inch and see how that looks we don't want the board the mountains to be too muted either but I think that that's gonna turn out pretty nice in the end so we turn it over and give us where the mountains are their highest at least a quarter inch of extra room now we can change that later if we want to but for right now I think that's gonna be pretty good the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our grass texture now because this is going to go into a, uh, a cabin that um, uh, is near a marsh and also is near um, some flatlands and so on, then we're going to go ahead and create part of this is going to be marsh on the, uh, uh, on the uh, left hand side and then the majority of it is going to be a couple different um, uh, woodsy scenes. So for now what we're going to do is we're just going to guess on where we want our marsh to stop. Let's say somewhere around there. And we're going to stretch out this grass texture. There we go. And it's being merged in. So if we go to our modeling tab, you'll see that the grass um, texture is being merged into our mountain range, which looks a little bit different right now. So we're going to go ahead and change the height of this to be 0.1. Let's see what that looks like. And that looks pretty good to me. And it kind of looks actually really good because it looks like in off in the distance it's kind of running into these the bottoms of the mountains. And a lot of this you're not going to see because it will be covered up with um, the um, the animals and the trees and so on. But I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to make it a bit thicker. There we go. It looks a bit better. That's good. And you'll see that right here. You'll see that it, the grass is kind of peeking out a bit there and giving us a hard edge. So let's just go ahead and select that again. We'll just use our cursor keys and we'll nudge it down a bit until that mostly goes away. Perfect, that looks great. Let's take a look straight on. And so far we've got a nice looking grassy area and then a void here. So let's go back to our clip art tab and we're going to go back to our, our duck panel and we're going to bring in our carved texture and we're going to create some water here. So we're going to drag that over to where I think the water should be. I'm going to squish it down and we're going to pull it out to fill in that area there. And we're going to go ahead and bring up our floating properties dialog and we're going to change this to be 0.1 and that looks pretty good. The neat thing about the water is that it's not going to matter so much because a lot of it will be covered up so that's just there's a little bit of an accent for right now. Now let's go ahead and just work on this end of our layout. So we're going to go ahead and bring in our tree stumps and rocks number one and actually when I double click on it of course it brings it to the center so I'm going to go ahead and drag it over here I'm going to size it up so it looks pretty good I think that's a pretty good size right there we're going to go ahead and start off with making this the actual shape height 0.35 it's still merging in a little bit we're losing some of the detail of our of our, um, of our st uh, tree stumps here but if we give it a bit of a base height then that should pop it up through those mountains. That looks pretty good. But I've got, we know that if I add these two together, I can add up to at least 0.5 of an inch. So we may as well make that the highest point of those 0.5. That'll give us lots of, lots of wiggle room there. It looks pretty nice so far. And then we're going to go now to our um, deep in the wilds project and we're going to grab the rocks. And these rocks actually look really nice with the rocks that are on the bottom of our trees there. So that looks pretty neat. And actually the actual heights and everything might be okay. Let's just change this to 0.35 again. And point, you'll see I'll be using these numbers a lot because um, they do match up quite nice when you use them, right? There we go. It looks perfect. You can't even tell that's two different models. And then what we're going to do is we are going to make a copy of this so we're going to hold down our control key while we drag it and the shift key. The shift key will lock it so that it only moves left and right straight. And once that gets done then we're going to press the H key, just the H key and that's going to flip it over horizontal. And so that's going to make a nice little area for our water. I'm going to scoot that over a little farther. And then we're going to go back to our duck panel and we're going to bring in our 
dead log and the dead log is going to fill in a lot of this space below. Like I said, that, that carved texture, you're really not going to see it much um, except for where, you know, every so often it's going to peek out. So we're going to go ahead and size that in there. That looks pretty good there. Maybe we'll make it a little smaller. So that's not too bold. That's great. And we're going to go ahead again and give this a 0.35 and we're going to give it a base height uh, point 0.1 this time around. Right? Let's see what we get. And the idea here is that we don't want to make sure that it, it doesn't run into too much and look really funny um, there. And it does look pretty good. So we're actually going to bring this back a little bit. I want there to be a little bit of a, of a step there. And then what we can do is we can actually take these rocks and we're going to fade them back a little bit so that the this this log actually looks like it's sitting in front of it. So if we go ahead and look straight down on our layout and zoom in, then we can go ahead and hit fade, set, and we're going to start one anchor point here, one anchor point over here, and it's automatically going to set it to 50%, but I think we're going to make that 25 just to see if it, yeah, there we go, that's better. Close that down. And now that looks a little bit better. Now because this is a marsh here, it doesn't look so marshy because there aren't any bushes and so on around or, or watery shrubby bits. So we're going to go and grab the bushes from the duck scene and we are going to bring those in and place them near the back of our layout here. And this will create, I'm holding down the controls key to copy those, this will create a nice looking sort of marshy look. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select both of those. Click one more time to bring up my floating properties dialog and we're going to change that to be a start height to point. We'll make a point one to see what we get. And there we have some nice, that's, that's maybe a little too much, let's make it zero, seven, five. Let's see if that, that's perfect. And so now we have some, a nice marshy looking area which actually looks like a marsh over there. Great. Now to separate these two parts of our layout, what I want to do is to, um, and what I had in mind, again working very organically, was this, no that's about right, that's pretty good I guess, okay good. Um, we're going to go ahead and add something in here, probably a tree would look good, to kind of separate the two um, areas of our, of our layout. So let's go to our deer mantle and we're going to pull in the fir tree and we are going to slide it over by the edge of our rocks here and we're going to scale it down just a little bit not too much because we want it to look like, yeah maybe we'll make it a little taller we want it to look like it's proportionate to these, these stumps over here and we're going to just nudge it into place and I want the, the stump of this um, or the trunk of the tree to actually cover up the edge of this rock if we can so let's just go ahead and make that 0.35 and we're going to give it a base height the 0.1 and we're going to see if that works. I guess make a 0.15 and that should almost do it. Okay so it looks pretty good but now we're going to go ahead and change this a little bit of this rock. We're going to change the, the shape height of this rock to be a little less maybe 0.29 uh, maybe even farther 0.2 make it 2.28 oh goodness six. There we go. So now the rocks kind of blend nicely into that and give you a nice transition. So that looks pretty good. Now the only thing we're missing is some animals. So let's go back to our duck panel and let's bring in a couple of our ducks. So of course we really like the duck number one. So we're going to pull him over here. Now these animals are going to be a bit out of scale mainly because they're the main focal point of this. Everything else is just kind of gravy on top of of these animals, but we want them to be okay, so that's probably a good size. Make him 0.35, and I'm sorry, 0.35 shape height, and we're going to make the base height same deal, 0.1 for now, and he comes out of that nice. So, oh shoot, sorry about that. I grabbed the bottom of my my window. So there we go. So that's that looks really good actually. 
That's perfect. So let's just go ahead and look down on that again. And we're going to add in a second duck, the, the mallard number two. And we're going to go ahead and pull him over here. And he's going to look like he's flying in the other direction, but yet off in the distance a bit farther. Like this. Maybe a little bit smaller. We're going to start him off with a base height of the point 0.1. And because of the way the mountains are, he's going to have to actually stick out a little, a little higher with the base height because he's got to be proud of those mountains. And you'll find that when you're doing this layout, depending on where you have your mountain range, you may have to wiggle these guys around a little bit just to make so that they can avoid any of the high bits of the mountain. And again, adding these up, we still have a half a millimeter, or excuse me, a, um, a half an inch we can work with. So let's make this 0.65. And there we go. So that will be our duck scene, which I think looks pretty nice. And now let's work on the rest of this. We might go back later and adjust that a bit, but for right now we're going to stick with that. So let's go back to our deer mantle, and we're going to bring in some trees to build a bit of a forest. And we want um, to use the fir trees, uh, the number one fir trees, and we're going to drag them over here. And we're going to size those down just a, little, just a little bit, not much. And we are going to go ahead and again give them a bit of a, a nice, a reasonable shape height and then a nice start height. And the great thing about a forest is if it happens to, to merge in funny with your tree next door, it's not a big deal. So that looks, that looks good. And we're going to select that and we are going to grab the, the center handle or hold down our control key and it's going to copy it and we're just going to move it over a little bit and to make it look a little more organic we're going to press H on the keyboard that's going to flip it horizontally and then we're going to go ahead and size it down a bit because this is going to make um, a nice little setting for a deer to sit in and all we're going to shoot all we're going to do is slide that over. And we just want to make sure that none of the mountains are peeking through our trees, which they're not. And we might just mess around with our base height a little bit. I guess we can't because that's going to mess things up there. Maybe our shape height we can bring down a little bit. Perfect. So there we have. We're starting to make a, a little bit of a clearing here for some deer. That looks pretty nice so far. So if we look straight down on our whole layout again, that's looking it's looking pretty good. Maybe we're going to tuck those guys in just a little bit in behind that tree a little farther. Great. Now what we're going to do is, we're again, we're going to go back over to these trees here, this first set that we dropped in, and we are going to hold down our control key and we're going to drag them over here. And tuck them in under the edge of our rail. Press H on the keyboard again to flip them. I want the tall tree to be on the outside edge. And we're going to pull them up be a little taller than the other trees and we're just going to tuck them in there a little bit. That looks great. Now we're going to bring in our log cabin. We're going to use it as one of the elements in the background. Now again, when I was talking a minute ago about making sure everything was to scale, the some of the animals are going to be out of scale slightly to the door in the cabin. But we're going to try our best to make it as nice as we can. So we're just going to place the cabin there for now. We're going to size it up and we're going to tuck the front edge underneath this rail or into this rail, the bottom rail of our frame, um, mainly so that it looks like it's, it's it gives it some depth, which I think is quite nice. So we're going to change this to 0.35 and give it a base height of 1. And we're going to see if, our, if we clear all of our mountains, which we do. Looks pretty nice right there, I think. Now we're going to go ahead again and we're going to grab these trees and we're going to slide them over and we're going to copy them holding down the control key while we slide them over. That'll make a copy. And we're going to go ahead and make them a little bit smaller. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to shift select the cabin because I want a bit more of a clearing here for another little part of this layout that I think will be interesting. Right, let's go. I like the way the trees are overlapping the end of our cabin. Adds again some more depth to this. So far it looks really good. 
and we're going to bring in these fir trees and we're going to tuck them in right here on this side of the the cabin so we're going to make those point two they're going to be a little further in the distance so, so the detail can be a little bit more muted no big deal and we're going to make this point one f5 and we're going to see if we can peek up now we're going to have to be careful because what's going to happen is like what just happened is these trees are coming through the cabin so we're going to scale those down a little bit then we're going to go ahead and give them that same base height and we're going to give them maybe a little bit less shape height and that looks pretty good there we just want to make sure that we avoid any of our mountains there and as we move it out you'll see that these kind of fit into a, a better area of the background which to be honest with you that looks really great right there I think perfect so now we have some trees back there to kind of give us a little more depth now we're gonna bring in what we want for this area right here so this is gonna be where we're gonna have use the elk from the elk scene have a little bit of a, a elk battle happening over here so we're gonna bring in that elk and we're gonna move him over here and we're gonna scale him down so we're gonna tuck his hind end into these trees over here once we're all done scale him down and then we're gonna bring in the second elk we're gonna bring him over here we're going to adjust our shape heights once we get them kind of situated where they need to be. Okay, and this is going to be an epic battle between a young elk and a much more mature elk. And shift select both of those, and we're going to give them a bit of a shape height that's going to be, again, 0.1. We're going to hope that we avoid. I'm oh, sorry, 0.1. Everything there. That looks pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to change these trees a bit. We're actually going to give them, uh, we're going to make the shape height 0.35. The base height is going to be 0.15. And we're going to, this is where being working being okay with working with these very organically is going to pay off now we're going to go ahead and take this elk and we're going to fade him from here to his hind end so, he, so that he actually fades in to the tree nicely and we're going to do the same with this elk over here fade set from here to there and he's going to fade in behind nicely as well. And we have a little bit of a, a battle going on there which is going to look kind of neat. Just, just peeking over there. So let's go back to our center and we're going to go and bring uh, in some deer from our deer mantle. We're going to bring in this deer here and he is actually going to be the deer that's going to be closest to us. So we're going to tuck a lot of his legs into the rail and we're going to make sure he's a substantial looking deer. Click the floating properties dialog again and we're going to make him 0.35. We may actually have to make that 0.3, uh, 0.3. And we're going to make this 0.2. Hit the space bar. And we're, we need that point, we need something here. so there he is. We're just going to turn it sideways. Yep, everything looks good. And he's going to look pretty neat right there. And in the background we're going to put a, another deer that's looking back towards the elk because obviously they're making a lot of noise. And we're going to scale him down a little. And we're going to make it 0.25 
uh, 0.35, excuse me. And we are going to bring him up through the, the background. Let's move this deer back a little bit into that tree a little bit. We're going to take this tree and we're actually going to fade it. Again, working very organically, right? I want to make sure that, that things look good where they are. I just want to make sure that it wasn't covering up his tail. And we're going to throw in another set of trees right back here. Now, I want to point out that you'll notice probably that the grass textures are pretty um, uniform looking. They don't look like they've been worn down by anything. There's nothing really um, interesting about them. And I'm going to show you a really interesting technique to make those really look good. So, there we have it. So overall, our layout looks pretty pretty nice. We've got at this end, we've got our duck scene, or our marsh scene. We've got coming into our our deer scene and the clearing and then we have a small clearing here with our elk battle happening. Let's just um, take these guys here and scale them down just a little bit just so they fit in there better. I want to make sure there's some nice definition between their legs and the grass and everything looks great. Okay, so I was talking about the grass looking kind of funny. These these trees just kind of the um, the trunk of them just, just kind of hang there, which looks kind of funny. So what I do is I bring in a cloud texture. And the cloud, actually, if you put it behind the grass and you set the shape height to just peek up through the actual grass, then it starts to give it a little bit more of an organic look. But you can see it breaks up that uniform look of of the grass and actually turns out to look pretty neat. So now that we've got that cloud in there, we can actually hold down our control key as we move that and it'll copy that cloud over there and give us more of a nicer looking organic look. And then we're going to do the same thing with over here where our elk are holding down the control key. We're going to drag it over there and that'll make it look really nice over here. We may need to make a few adjustments because you'll see that our leg of our elk here is kind of going in there. So we're going to change our, our shape height a bit on this guy here, or our base height, excuse me. And we'll make him the same. And then maybe we're going to need to go in and adjust the shape height of this cloud to be a 175 and that'll give us the definition that we need and also give it a nice sort of organic look to that area. So there we have it. So let's just go ahead and get a good feel for how this looks. We're going to go up and click view and we're going to turn on our shadow shading and then we're going to turn off our modeling plane. Now the first thing you're going to notice is we've got a nice beautiful blue sky there without any clouds which is great but also there's some negative space there that we need to fill in with something, especially if you're going to show this to a customer. We really need to have something there to fill in that space. Um, so we're going to add that in in a second, but we're going to take a quick look across our whole layout. It looks really nice here. We've got our ducks and our water, the nice marshy area, blends in nicely into our deer scene, our cabin, and then our elk, which looks great. So let's go ahead now and let's work with the next bit, which is going to be fixing our sky here. So let's go and find a different cloud than we used for our um, to model the grass a bit. We're going to go to our Deep in the Wilds project and we're going to bring in our cloud number six and we're going to move it out of our mountains and put it up here into the sky. And we're going to go ahead and size that up. 
and it's going to merge nicely into our frame like we have. We're going to go ahead and copy that over here, holding down our shift key and our control key, not our shift key, sorry, just our control key while we drag. Then we're going to click H, which will flip it horizontally. And then we're going to make a copy of that. And because they're merging into each other, these will actually merge nicely into each other and give us sort of a nicer looking cloud. And we might want to just squish it a bit to give it even more of a natural look. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring in our sun or moon. In this case, it's going to be a sun. We're going to scale it down. We're going to put it up here somewhere. Maybe just behind that tree would look kind of neat. Somewhere around there looks good. That looks great. And then maybe we're going to put in one more cloud. So let's go back to our duck panel. We'll bring in this cloud that we did use for the, um, the modeling of the, the ground. And we'll scale this up and slide it over by our sun. Bit of an overcast day here. That looks pretty good. Now again, we're going to need to, our last step is to fill in this background. Now if you have a spire, you could create a rectangle and create its own component that's really thin and you could merge it in there or you could add it to the backing and that would be great. Perfect for presentation. But if you have vCarve Pro or vCarve Desktop, you can't do that. So here is a little trick. So we're going to go bring in this border rail. Now you can do this with any model that you have that's long and flat. Or it doesn't need to be long and flat, just flat. Um, and we're going to stretch it out to be as big as, holding down the shift key, I can actually scale it out. I'm going to scale it up. And I'm going to fill in or cover up my whole center of my layout. And then what I'm going to do is bring up my floating properties dialog and I'm going to make it very very thin. So 0 0.001 hit the spacebar and that's actually going to make a very thin component at the back. And seeing it's just merged in it looks really good and it adds that extra bit to it. So there we have it. I know it's hard, probably hard to see but it's actually a really great looking layout. And you can change this up with any of the different models from the Wildlife Scenes collection and really I'll customize it for almost any cottage cabin or just as a, a nice, if you're not going to use it as a mantle, maybe it would make a beautiful um, wall hanging, which would look great in a camp or cottage. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful and uh, I hope you enjoy hacking together all of the different models from all five projects that are included in the wildlife scenes collection and also some of the things that we taught you here fading using the clouds to help model the ground um, working with the models very organically are very useful when you're hacking together or working with any of the design and make projects important note if you plan to create tooling and run it on your cnc make sure that you use values for the material setup and for the parameters of each toolpath that are safe and appropriate for your cnc machine the tooling you have available and whatever material you are planning to use for your project